The deep state's persecution of uh, General Michael Flynn goes on with the help of all the radical Dems. Uh, Judge Emmett Sullivan's designated partisan shadow prosecutor, John Gleason, today arguing the Justice Department's motion to dismiss the case against General Flynn as a, quote, gross abuse of prosecutorial power. He actually said that apparently with a somewhat straight face. We should point out that Gleason's brief was submitted with help from David O'Neill, who was Sally Yates' attorney when she testified to Congress in 2017. Both men work in the same Washington law firm. And General Flynn still in the uh, grip of what has been a three-year torture by the Justice Department and the judicial, uh, the judicial uh, branch. Uh, Attorney General William Barr saying there's some familiar names under investigation by U.S. Attorney John Durham. Barr didn't want to give the names, but he did say he's troubled with what Durham has found so far. Barr saying Durham's investigation does not directly involve former President Barack Obama or former Vice President Joe Biden. Well, more than 1,200 former Department of Justice workers want an investigation into the role that the attorney general played when protesters were cleared from Lafayette Square in Washington, if you can believe this nonsense. The letter was formed by the activist group Pro Protect Democracy. They want the Justice Department's Inspector General Michael Horowitz to look into uh, the use of force. Barr has said some in the crowd were throwing bricks, frozen water bottles at police, and these 1,200, bless their darling hearts, want to know something more about 15 minutes in Lafayette Park. Well, our next guest this evening spent three months as acting director of national intelligence. And for that, the nation is indebted to him. In that short time, he declassified a number of Obama officials unmasking General Michael Flynn. He forced the release of all 53 uh, interview transcripts from the House Intel Committee on, remember that, Russian collusion? Declassified Susan Rice's email to herself about Flynn and declassified notes from the Justice Department Inspector General's report on FISA abuse. I'm pleased to say joining us tonight is Rick Grinnell, and it is great to have you with us, Rick, and congratulations and our thanks for all that you have done uh, for, your, uh, for your country as ambassador and as DNI. It's good to see you. Let's start with thanks, the Attorney General talking about Talk about the prospect of uh, names we're familiar with coming up in Durham's investigation. Your reaction? Look, I, I think uh, Attorney General Barr is doing a great job. I got to work very closely with him. He's very thorough. He's looking at the facts and letting the facts determine the case. Uh, we clearly had a problem, Lou, and I think people are beginning to realize that the red flags that were raised early, and this is a very key point that people need to understand, the red flags that were raised early on in the Russian investigation, red flags from career officials at FBI and the CIA and other intelligence agencies saying that uh, this was um, something that they shouldn't pursue, that seemed to be trumped up, that uh, had really dubious uh, claims with the Steele dossier. All of these red flags were pushed aside. They were done through the bureau bureaucratic uh, task of classifying these uh, comments, pushing people aside. And frankly, when I saw it, I was very sad for our country because I couldn't believe that, that the voices uh, that were, were saying from the beginning uh, slow down, this doesn't seem right, this is wrong, yeah. uh, this, this isn't the whole story. All of those voices were silenced and pushed away, and yet the people who clearly had political motivations to fan the flames and to make the situation uh, much uh, nastier than, than what it really was, uh, those voices were the only voices out there. And so when I was uh, inside and looking at this information, I was, I was saddened because the American people didn't get to see the, the full story. They got half the story. They got a little piece 
And that little piece uh, was really disingenuous to the truth. And so uh, I think it's important. I think the American people deserve to have information. And what I wanted to do was to systematically go through and declassify the information uh, that, that was from the beginning, that was used to start this Russian investigation, and let the American people see the facts. And it's shocking to see how uh, many of these transcripts and many of these uh, footnotes and, and specific pieces of information were pushed aside and not given the light. Because frankly, if they had been given the light, if they had been given voice, the narrative would have fallen apart rather quickly, I think, as we saw some DOJ officials say, let's collapse this case. This, there is no case here, and yet it continued. Would you not also agree that uh, this, uh, this effort by the deep state, if you will, re referencing both the intelligence community, uh, the, uh, specifically the Department of Justice, the FBI, could not have proceeded? Uh, without a, a, a symbiotic relationship uh, of evil, uh, in my view, between the radical Dems, who were so politically motivated and uh, lusting for uh, power and frustrated at the election of this president, that they worked with those agents within the intelligence community and with the FBI and the Department of Justice in league with a compliant, complicit national left-wing media. Without all of those characters in position and playing their roles, it just could not have, could not have been carried out uh, with, uh, successfully. Look, I think what you're touching on is the culture of Washington, D.C., and I think that you hit it on the head. Uh, we have a real problem. Right now, we, we do not have a fight between Republicans and Democrats. Uh, that traditional fight has given us great policy issues. Um, many would argue it, when you're in the center, uh, you get this kind of uh, majority movement uh, towards progress. And we don't have that fight anymore, Lou. What we have is, is a permanent bureaucracy in Washington, and I include the media in that. Washington versus the rest of America. When you go to Washington, D.C., uh, and you live there, then you can get a job in one of these bureaucracies. Why, why do we have all of the federal government, or at least by far the majority of the federal government bureaucracies based in Washington, D.C.? I don't think it's healthy. I think we saw with COVID, uh, it's not healthy when there's a pandemic. Um, there's a whole bunch of problems that we can unpack here, but, but clearly when the media live in Washington, D.C., uh, when the bureaucracy lives in Washington, D.C., they fight for their their city. They, they have a sports team now, and they are very proud of this city, and they therefore are not going to be able to be a check and a balance on the growth of the capital, so to speak. And, and the American people have to understand mm -hmm. that Donald Trump, when he was elected, he talked about changing the culture, changing the way that it's done. And this was an affront to the people in Washington, D.C. They did two things. One, almost 70 Democrats refused to show up at the peaceful transition of power. Now, right. Lou, I worked at the State Department for 11 years. If that happened in another country, we would call it out. We would say, grow up and go to the uh, inauguration. Go to the, the process and show that you can be peaceful. We had almost yeah. 70 Democrats, sitting members, completely say that they're not even showing up. We have a problem in Washington, and, and I think Donald Trump uh, put his finger on it, and they are lashing out against him because of it. And we have, let's be straightforward, we have an Obama problem. Un members of his administration unmasking, amongst others, uh, General Michael Flynn. I know you've got some strong views about uh, unmasking. Uh, and what did occur, and we'll take that up with Rick Grinnell as we continue the conversation. The unmasking of uh, General Michael Flynn, uh, the, uh, the obvious partisan judicial process working against the, uh, the general for the past three years. We're back with the former acting director of national intelligence, Rick Grinnell. And Rick, I want to ask you your thoughts about unmasking. Uh, and what needs to be done to protect the rights of American citizens? 
Well, first of all, I think um, you know unmasking in and of itself uh, is something that that should be allowed. In in certain cases, I think it's important for policymakers to to see that there are uh, Americans who um, may be swept up in something, and may, maybe they need to know because they don't know what's going on. And so there are a variety of reasons why uh, you could and should be able to unmask. But what I did when I went to uh, the office, the director of national intelligence, and I saw the information, Lou, to me there's a higher bar from the election day of Donald Trump until the inauguration day of Donald Trump, in that transition period. That's when we know that Trump and his team, President Trump and his team, are coming in. That's when we know that the Obama team is going out, and we know exactly who is going to be replacing whom. It's very important for a peaceful transition of power to be peaceful and to be cooperative. I think President Bush gave that uh, to President Obama. They worked very closely. Matter of fact, I could, I could tell you that that happened because Susan Rice and Samantha Power, in their House testimony, admitted that during the transition between Bush and Obama, they worked very closely with President Bush's team, and they also were talking sure. to foreign leaders during that transition. But for me, when, when the unmasking We've just got of, a few seconds, Rick. I flip, apologize. Well, when Flynn was unmasked during that period, that short period of time, that was troubling for me. That was a higher bar, and that's yeah. why I unmasked those names to show who did that. Rick Gurnell, I enjoyed talking with you. Thanks for being here. And whenever you decide what you're doing next, we wish you all of the best and great success.